there are no outposts for white in the center but after he played knight d4 we notice that he's aiming for c6 to make it into an effective outpost for the knight and maybe support it later with b5 bishop takes if he tries knight d5 trying to cover c6 square then white can play e4, knight goes back, if knight goes to c7 then rook c1 and c6 is in white's hands. After knight goes back to f6, e5, knight d5 and knight c4 and white suddenly has an outpost on d6. After bishop takes, king takes, queen c7, queen b3 and rook up to c8. That is the right rook to put on c8 because if white pushes b5 in the future, black would like to challenge it with a6. Rook up to c1, queen b7 check, queen f3. Exchange of queens would be good for white because if takes takes, white can play knight c6, rook c2 and rook a to c1 with a complete triangle hold on the game and black rooks will be suffocated. That's why black played knight d5, trying to defend c6 square by blocking the long diagonal, e5, knight goes back, b5. So white secured the c6 square for the knight, but can black nullify the smothering effect of knight c6 by exchanging some pieces? Let's see, if takes takes, rook c8, knight c6, bishop c5, and this is not a good position for black. White can play knight c4 and rook d1. There is pressure on the file and white knights are really strong. If knight e5, queen e2, takes takes, rook c8, takes takes, f4, knight goes back, knight c6, bishop f8. If takes, then queen c2. And this is dangerous for white, so instead white should play knight c4, maintains the initiative, but exchanges did make position easier for black. In the game black tried something else, a6, knight c6, bishop f8, a4, takes takes, takes takes, and rook a8. So he's trying similar idea of exchanging rooks, but he was surprised by white's next move, rook d1. A deep move, white realizes that black cannot do much on the a file if rook a2 then queen b3 or even knight c4. So he saves his rook because he realizes that he needs it to make full use of his outposts. Knight e8, black is feeling white's pressure. He got c5 outpost, but if he tries knight c5 immediately, he's gonna lose a pawn after bishop f6. After knight e8, we have knight c4, knight c5, and now e5. Some deadly tactical possibilities appear on the long diagonal. For example, if knight c7, rook d7 takes, and knight e7, winning a queen. If knight a4, then knight e7 still takes and winning a rook. If rook a4, then rook d8 takes, takes with a deadly threat of knight e7. If king h8, trying to remove knight e7 threat, then knight b6 takes, queen f7, and bishop is lost. If knight c7, then rook d8. You may be wondering how so many deadly tactical possibilities are in white's favor. Well, if you have a superior position, then it's just natural that tactical possibilities are gonna be in your favor. Rook c8, rook a1. This move wins, threatening rook a7, winning a queen. Rook a8 loses to take stakes and knight e7, winning a queen. And if queen c7, rook a7, knight b7, bishop d4. Bishop c5, takes takes, and knight from c6 to a5, winning a piece. In the game black played rook c7, and after rook a7, takes, 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 and knight b6. Black resigned. 